trying to spray the hey, colors. Here we are. It's trying to go live. It's trying. Wow, it's buffering even trying to go live. Oh, wow. There we are. I think it just went live. Boy, that buffered a long time just trying to go live. Yeah, it's live. And, and I've got a delay on YouTube. Waiting. Oh, boy. I think I've got a big delay on YouTube. Hopefully, everybody else's isn't quite so bad. Hi, everybody. Hello, hello. Happy Monday. Happy, happy Monday. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Let's get over here to chat and say hello to Sylvia. She whispers, Margie, are you here? <laughs> That's cute. Hey, you want to talk? <laughs> we got some time. That's awesome. And you're here before Margie. Woo! Glennis. <laughs> Margie. Oh, hi, Glennis. Hi, Linda. Did everybody have a good weekend? Uh, well, this world, my Chris, Margie must be first. <laughs> That's funny. There she is. There she is. Miss America. Hi, Margie. Boy, that's bad for a Monday. Don't do that, Marianne. <laughs> it's bad. Angie, hi. Uh, oh, a friend who chats with me during lunch break. Why well, I'm usually a bit late on Mondays. Oh, ooh. Friends. Ooh, now we know. <laughs> yeah, all is well with the world. Margie's in the house. <laughs> Kevin? Oh, now she started up a Monday chat with Kevin. <laughs> oh, man. It's happy paper people time. Get the drink, like, share, and get comfy. Yes. And if you're in the mood, even if you're not, we'll get you in the mood. Grab some uh, paper. Grab some sprays. We're going to play oh, today. See this on our TV, but not on the phone. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh, Linda, Linda. 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 That's why we were having trouble going live. Uh, yeah, I hit live and it just kept going around and round and round and round and it was taking a, it took a while to go live. But um, Linda, is it not letting you scroll to the top? That's weird. Hi, Christy. Hey, hey, hey. Christy, you gonna play along with us today? I love when Christy's here because she always plays along with us. I hope. She's been up to her eyeballs and wedding stuff for her daughter. How fun. How fun. Oh, there's DM. Hi, DM. Good to see you. Try refreshing if you have to. Hello, Julie. There you are. Uh oh, <laughs> oh, my peeps. That's right. Hey, Carrie. Uh, <laughs> so let's see. Oh, we don't want to know, Margie. We don't want to know. <laughs> oh, Glennis is playing with us. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who else is going to play with us? Today, today we are going to, um, we're going to jump right into what we're going to do. Um, we're going to do work in the art journal. I'm going to get Jerry having, 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 I don't know. Sherry, Sherry having. Yeah. Oh, hi, Sherry. Hi. Sherry's here. Hi. Good to have you here on a Monday, Sherry. <laughs> Don't mind Candy. She can't speak today. <laughs> no, oh, I can never speak. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm going to put on gloves today. I don't normally, I don't like wearing gloves, but I need to try to keep my hands a little cleaner today. So now I feel like a surgeon. That's just weird. So <laughs> I don't know. I like getting my fingers in everything. <laughs> hmm? What did you say? Sure not operating on me. <laughs> not really. <laughs> oh, you would come out very colorful. <laughs> yeah. Did you leave a spray bottle in there, Marianne? Did you get it out? <laughs> it's still in there. I won't leave any sponges, but you might have a little extra paint or <laughs> a stencil. <laughs> you might have a stencil. No, you'd make a so it's the paint you spilled it. <laughs> <laughs> really, that's true. Um, it's not super messy. And sometimes when I do it, I really don't get messy at all. But because I need to keep my hands clean today, you know that that's the day I'll get and super messy. Get one of your fingernails, that's hard to get off. Yeah. And, the, and the, the techniques that we're doing today, we really don't have to get into it like that. 
I just know that if I'm trying not to get messy, I will. So if I do this, then I won't and we'll all be happy. <laughs> so, um, okay, first of all, we're going to give you... To wear gloves. Oh, great wood chipper. Wear gloves. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm, I'm getting prepared to help. Ouch! Stab myself. Oh, crap. I, I, I did. I just stabbed myself. Oh, oh man. The, the blood will stay inside the glove, hopefully. <laughs> I'm getting prepared. <laughs> I'm getting prepared to help Candy with the wood chipper. <laughs> so we are practicing with gloves, ladies. <laughs> I don't want my prints left on that wood chipper. No. I didn't no. touch that. Wood I don't know what happened to him. No, no, no. I don't either. I stab yourself. I wear gloves. <laughs> somebody else. <laughs> exactly. Uh, or learn to how learn how to take these little plastic things off. I mean, oh. they're uh, they're great. I I tell you, I've had some wet mediums come in or media come in that um, mediums or media that have have uh, leaked. It is not fun. So I do appreciate these plastic thingies that wrap around so tight and protect them and keep them closed. But I hate trying to take them off. They are a pain. Stress oh, ones. Oh my god, they're horrible. Which ones? On the distressed ones. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do yeah. right now. They're horrible. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're nice and tight, but um, so even once you start them, they'll still. You can't yeah. Keep them. As long as I, as long as it undoes and gets past here, then I'm good. I, I don't care. I'll leave it on the bottom. Yeah, it's fine there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So if you'll watch chat for a minute for me, I'll kind of explain what we're gonna do. I'm gonna give you. Uh, we, we every now and then we try to give you a formula. We've done some formulas for making certain things, and um, sometimes it makes it a little easier if you don't really know what to do or how to start, but you know kind of what you want. If you have a formula, you can change up the colors or the stencils or whatever you're using. And oh, let's see if that's great big. I'm going to do a small. Let's. Sorry, just making up my mind as we go here. Um, <laughs> I'm going to share with you a formula that uh, Diane Reevely uses. She's with Ranger and she has um, awesome um, dilution stuff like these sprays. I, I pulled them all out, stuck them in something as I'm reorganizing. I don't know where they are. I could only find two. I wanted to use the dilutions, so I won't be using the dilutions today. But instead, ow, my thumb really hurts where I stabbed it. <laughs> Instead, I will use some uh, Distress Spray Stains. You can use any spray as long as it's water-based. So I have several techniques to show you, and they're all in formulas so that they're things that you could just repeat. Use different colors, different stencils, get completely different looks, but you could write down the steps and use the formula. Um, and the one, we'll start with the spray one, and the one with the spray, as long as your sprays are water-based. I also have these cool uh, Prima Color Bloom, which I love. They've got great mica in them. And so I just got those. So I'm going to um, probably use some of those. So, uh, mm, mm, yeah. All right. So let me show you kind of a basic, just so you get an idea. Here's kind of a, 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 a base start background. You can see some stencil pattern in there. You can see some different stencil pattern there. You can do multiple stencil patterns on a page. You can do the same one on the whole page. You can see three different colors in there. While I'm talking about this, choose three colors that you want to work with. Three colors. There's the opposite of the same one. Three colors that are either warm or cool. Okay, think of warm as you're sitting in front of the fire. That would be the reds, the oranges, the yellows, the browns. Those are all warm, warm colors. This one that you're looking at right here, I did with three warm colors. And these are the three that I used. Distress spray stains. I used fossilized amber, picked raspberry, and barn door. Doesn't matter which ones. You could pick any, any, of, any three warm colors and they'll be fine. If you pick cool and warm colors, you're going to get mud. But you need them, because we're doing them all at the same time, they need to be able to blend. 
uh, cool colors. Those are the ones if you're by the ocean and you see the blues, the blue sky and the, the different shades of blue and green of the ocean. And, and um, here, uh, I think I might, oh, that's an oxide. I can't use that. No oxide, no oxide today. Uh, this is Villainous Potion, Prize Ribbon. And if I can go grab the regular spray, not the oxide of Mermaid Lagoon, I would like to try that one on the cool. So pick either three cool colors or three warm colors that you would like to start with. Um, we should have time to do several things. So you could try more than one combination if you'd like. I'm looking to see if it's right here. If you like to see it, uh, Christy, I mean, Christy, Dawn Marie did some spraying this morning. Uh-huh. Julie says she has all the Delusions colors. Cool. Marjorie said she has a couple of Tattered Angels. That's it. The dilutions are Delusions. very pretty. Thanks for it come off your fingers. Just saying. So is the, <laughs> so is the others. Uh, to be given by your nail bed. And Marjorie said, mud is brown. Brown is the color of chocolate. Brown is good. <laughs> it is. It is, except when you want multiple colors. You don't want the interaction that the offside provides on this one, Carrie. Just, you can do it, but well, for today, we just didn't want the, it's so, not the formula that we're using today. Right. Um, what was I looking for? Mermaid Lagoon. Mermaid Lagoon. Um, or something that's kind of greenish. It's not. Hmm. Well, let's try this brushed pewter. That's a distress spray stain. That is not an oxide. I don't think I have that one. Um, I don't think I've tried that one yet. So hi, Angela. What the heck? Hi, Angela. I like trying new ones. So, oh, hey, Carrie. Uh, well, Carrie Waters was here earlier. I said hi to her. Did you? Yeah. I just missed her earlier then. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so here's the thing about, about colors, uh, the mixing the warm and the cool. I'm not saying warm and cool don't go together. We all know they do. Red and green is Christmas, you know. Um, orange and purple for Halloween. We all know that we like some warm and cool together. But here's the thing. If you are doing um, mixed media or something where you want warm and cool together, and you want to be able to see the different colors and not have them just mixed together in into mud, then you want you need to put one on first and dry it and then put the other one on so that they're not just mixing while they're wet into one big pool of mud. So the technique that we're doing today, we can't do that. We can't dry it in between the colors. So that's why we're sticking with warm or cool. And for those who have not done a technique like this before or want some of those formulas that work, that work every time, I want to give you a formula that works every time. And I know it will. You know what? I'm going to stick that dilutions in there. Maybe we'll do that one. Um, I want to give you a formula that works every time. And I know that if you do, if you grab three warms or three cools, it will work every time. So, and then after, from there, play with it. Do whatever, do whatever you want with it. You know, play, try. You never know until you try to see what happens. I'm going to move my phone so I don't end up spraying on it. And I'm going to grab the baby wipes, make sure that they are close at hand. It's just weird having gloves on. I don't really like gloves. Okay. So here's, here's the uh, same three colors, the same warm colors. And there's a border start on that one. I'll show you how to do that. And very, very simple, basic um, art journal page using this technique. And you could then come in here with a white gel pen and you could write, or you could continue to decorate the page. But you don't really know as you look at it, and I, I know it's kind of hard to see on camera, but there's probably, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight different, different layers, different things on here. So we're, that's what we're going to do. And it's really quite simple. And once you have the formula down, you'll go, wow, I can do that. I can do that every time. All right. So let's find a clean page here. 
Julie's asking if they need a roll of paper towels. Oh, you do need a roll of paper towels. I put it, yep, I put that in the description box. I did list in the description box everything I would be using. And a roll of paper towels is very helpful. Now, will, can you do this without a roll of paper towels? Yes. But it is very helpful to have one. It is very helpful to have one. Um, okay, so let's... Huh. I'm I'm almost hesitant to try these new sprays on this one. I want I want it to work for sure for you, to, so that you get the formula down the first time. All right, let's do one that I know works, and then we'll play with some other other color combinations and um, see what else we can get. Um, here's okay. Here's three color combinations that I have not used. In fact. Oh, that one looks, oh, that is metallic. And I haven't even opened this one. Rodney, Margie said, just take the towel, the blanket off your paper, off your bed if you don't have paper towels. There you go. <laughs> that works. Um, and, you know, when you sit down to do this, things need to dry in between stuff that you're doing. So, honestly, it's... Um, some you might sit down for one art journal session and maybe you do a bunch of backgrounds like this, even different colors, and you set them out to dry. And then you come back another day and you do the next layer, you know, something on them. Um, we're going to do it all today. And um, some things work better when they're dry. Some things we can dry with the dryer and, and try to force it along. Let's see if I can move these over here just a little bit more. I am not using watercolor paper. In fact, I am. But she is not. No. Um, uh, in fact, I don't think you should use watercolor paper for this technique. Oh, really? Yeah. I think a smooth paper is going to give okay. you a much better result. Watercolor has that nice bumpy texture. Um, and, and it's not going to give you as good a result. Um, okay. So here's our three colors. I'm just going to use these again. And this is uh, fossilized amber, picked raspberry, barn door, and any, I just wanted uh, anything that was kind of orangey, reddy, pinky, that, you know, yellowy that's in the warms. Um, <laughs> the Carrie made a mistake of cleaning up her art area, and now she can't find anything. Oh, no, Carrie, don't you hate when that happens? <laughs> that happens to me all the time. All the time. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do, and you need a spray bottle of water. Just plain water. You must have water. All right. So I am going to first take just a piece of paper and cover the right side. I'm going to work on one side. Now, if these, I'll probably do another one with these because I want to show you on different surfaces. But these are all like this one is. This is colored pencil. This one here is colored pencil paper. Okay. And it's thick enough. Um, this one is the Stamperia journal, the mixed media journal. So it's mixed media paper. Um, sometimes I use like a heavy uh, sketching paper out of a sketchbook. But any of those will work. But mixed, I, I think... Um, watercolor paper will not give you a result that you like. All right, so I'm going to cover the right side. <laughs> hey, Charlie. Uh, oops. Uh-oh. He <laughs> fell as he shut the door. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so this came out of the big book, and this is two pages side by side like this. So, um, you know, that's much larger. And we'll do one like that so that you can see that as well. This You can do it on any size. But we're really only going to work on one side here first, and you'll see why. So first thing to do is take your bottle of water, and we are going to generously spray just to make this whole page wet. Okay? I mean, don't, like, dip it in water, but you can see water. You can see water all over it. And then I'm going to pick a color. It doesn't matter which of these you um, use first. Um, if you're using Distress Spray Stain, you do not need to shake it. There's nothing to shake up. It's ink. Okay. And then I'm going to, let's see, this is small. Put my brain into small mode because the last one I did was a large one. Okay. 
I'm going to spray a couple spots. Now, see how it's pooling? If it's pooling up, that's how you know you have enough. You need that water underneath it, and you need um, enough ink on top of it. So you want enough ink here that it's pooling. You want it pooling and running. I mean, they are not all over your desk, but... So this is a small book. I gave it about two spritzes on each one. Okay. And now I'm going to remove that paper. And if I was using this one out of the big book, I would pull out another page to put over on top of it. But because this is a book, I can just take the next page and I'm going to lay the next page on top of it. So I'm just going to lay the next page on top of it and just press it down. There was plenty of paint on there. Plenty of ink. I'm sorry. We're not doing paint. See, I put my hand over here on the overspray and then I get it all over this. I already got my base started for the next one. <laughs> and then separate them. Ooh, pretty. I want to get that white. Let's see if we can get a little... That's all right. Sometimes I like a little white. It get, adds something. Okay, then I'm going to take my roll of paper towels and I'm going to get some of that right out of the middle so it isn't too, too, too soaking right down the center. Okay, so we've got all our colors on there. We placed the other journal page on. We pressed it down. We transferred ink over to this side. And then we want to blot the whole thing just gently with the roll of paper towels just to get up the excess, okay? Not a ton, just to get up the, I'm leaving some of that on there, but it just gets up the, anything that might still be puddling. There really wasn't any puddling, but there was a, a pretty wet in that one area. Okay, so now we're gonna choose a stencil. So let me grab a stencil. This one will go over the whole page. I'll use this one. So we're gonna lay the stencil over this page here. And I want it to cover the whole, the whole page. Um, and when I use the bigger one, most of my stencils won't cover that whole page. So I'll do one stencil on part and another stencil on another part. And maybe even three stencils on parts. And I like that as well. Okay, so I'm going to lay this down. And I'm trying to just make it... Uh, stick if it's going to, you know, while it's still wet. And then I'm going to spritz it with water. That was a pretty generous spritz of water all across the page. Okay. And then, making sure these are out of my way here. Not, let's not knock that over. I'm going to lift the stencil up. And I'm going to flip it over here to the other side of the page so that my goal is the part that was already down. No, I want to flip it over. I want to flip it this way. That's what I want to do. I want the top that is wet to go down on this side. Get myself backwards already. It's weird saying it as I do it. I'm confusing myself because it's slow. Makes my brain go weird. Okay. <laughs> so, wait, you've, used, you've already done all the colors? When did I miss that? So, yeah, I, yeah. so I need to spray everything and then let it pour. So, and then spray so water. Spritz, it, spritz the whole thing with water. Okay. Spray, just, we're only working right. on, if you're, if you're in a book, if you're in a book, we're only working on the one side of the page. Yep, about that. Spritz the whole thing with water. Then okay. take the three colors and spritz each color like in two locations. Okay. So you're getting like six areas with the two colors. Okay. Then lay, lay your stencil down. Okay. One tip, when you pick these up and you have spray on them, just wipe the spray off right away because if it dries on there, next time you use that stencil, these are water-based. Those uh, inks will reactivate and you'll have that color in whatever you're doing. Okay. 
So then we put the stencil down, we spritzed it with water. You can see this through here. And then we're, we just flipped it over so the top that had water on it came over to this side. And now I'm gonna take my paper towel roll and I'm going to blot, this isn't very wet over here, almost should be wetter. I'm going to blot both sides and get up all that excess. And you have a positive imprint of your stencil on one side and a negative imprint of your stencil on the other side. <clears throat> that makes sense. You can see that on both sides. So same stencil, but different look on the two sides. Okay, everybody there? So this is um, what Diane calls a, a ghosted image. You know, when she flips the stencil over and uses the top, that's it's only wet. It was only water on the top of that stencil um, that went over to this side and touched the ink. And then when we blotted it up, then then it's a ghosted image. So, okay. So the stencil will not take. What did she? Um, okay, a couple things. I'm sure you already did, but let's start with the bottom. The bottom layer, make sure they're water-based sprays. So if you're using distress spray, then great. You also have to make sure that you put enough on. If you're afraid of it dripping everywhere and not getting enough, and you don't get puddles, you're not going to have enough ink on there. Yeah. So you need plenty. You need plenty of water, and then you need plenty of ink. If you see it pool up, you've got enough. If it doesn't pool, you don't have enough. Yeah, but get, get more water on to start. Then the stencil you put put it down and spray it with water first or after? After. Okay. I felt like, so here's the other thing. I this have stencils. I have stencils that are completely built up with medium and paint. Those are not going to work well because the stencil can't touch your paper. There's too much in between them. So you do need a fairly clean stencil. So after your color, put your stencil down on the one side, press it on, and then spray it well generously spray it with water okay and then just leave it there for a minute and then just pick it up and flip it exactly over so the top of the stencil that's wet now goes on the other side and press that down and just hold that for a minute doesn't take long and then when you pick that up then take your paper towel roll and just blot, I wouldn't roll, I wouldn't rub, just blot those um, two sides. And just to get up, all you're trying to get up is anything that's still runny or liquid. I didn't have anything left runny on this side at all. So I barely got enough on there. Mm, that's pretty. But you do, yeah, you do need a good, a good puddle. That is pretty, look at that. Cool, you're using the cool colors. Awesome. Yeah. I didn't get quite enough cooling on the first spray, but yeah. And you know, if you get pretty yeah, if you get a pretty good um, image the very first time you do it, then then that's great. All right. Now from here, there's a lot of different things that you can do. You can um let me just move these completely out of the way until we're ready to try them. Because they are just kind of in my way. Yeah, I don't have Paper towel, mine's hooked. <laughs> we started, so yeah, you can use paper towels, but you know the roll is nice. Oh, and fine, lady. <laughs> um, if you have, I might even have there. Oh, Chrissy, I know sprays. They they frustrate me. They don't. The the ones that I found that work consistently for me are the distress sprays. I, they don't clog them. Yeah. Like Yes. They have all clogged on me, and some of them have clogged before I've even used them. Oh, that is so frustrating. So, frustrating. so, so frustrating. That's an oxide. Don't want that. So I bought some of the color blooms to try those because yeah. I like the tips on them. The sprayers on them look kind of cool. I thought I was trying to try So, okay. So now it is, th this is what I mean by making some bases, you know, doing some journal page bases and then letting them completely dry, completely cure and then coming back another day and building on him. I'm going to set this aside rather than, than 
grab the dryer because I know some of you are going, wait a minute, I'm not sure I have the steps down. I'm going to do it again a couple of times, different colors, different ways. Watch. <laughs> and set, the, set, the side, set this aside. Then while well, it's just drying a bit, but we're going to come back to it. And I'm this time I'm going to grab these great big giant pages out of here. And this is just colored pencil paper. It's uh, 100, uh, 114 pound. So it's, you know, heavier than copy paper, but it's not even mixed media paper. But it works. It works um, really well. But it's quite a bit larger. So, all right. So I've got these two. We know we're going to work only on the one side first. So I'm just going to set that one here. And I think this time, um, let's see, what do I have in cool? Villainous Potion. This is a Dilusions. Uh, periwinkle blue and brushed pewter. I don't know if this has metallic in it, if that will make any difference that will or will not work. So um, prize ribbon, prize ribbon and periwinkle should be pretty different, shouldn't they? Are they? I don't know. I don't know. If they're different enough, you know, one's light blue and one's dark blue, then, then that will work. But if uh, they're not different enough, All right. I'll tell you what, maybe it's time to pull these up. Let's look for some cools. Okay, we've got this cobalt blue. Let's use that. And we've got two purples. What do we have? Iris and pink crocus. Um, this one looks a little richer in color. And boysenberry. All right, there we go. Let's try those. Maybe we want this lighter one then if we're doing. Okay, so there's three cool colors. So it doesn't really matter which colors you use as long as they're all three warm or all three cool because you see how when they're all completely wet, how they're um, going to puddle into or with each other. Let me shake these up real quick. Make sure they're mixed. These are brand new, but... Uh, we all know I like experimenting in front of you, so you can see all the, the messes and mistakes, right? <laughs> oh, I thought you were just like spilling it in front of us. Okay, so let's do this again. Um, Carrie says she's using 70-pound drawing paper. Works great. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Chrissy said her color, your our colors are so bright. Hers aren't. She's thinking she's not doing it right. Okay. Uh, Carrie, are you using distress spray stains? Let's start there. What are or what are you using? It doesn't matter what brand brand you use, honestly. And different different colors are going to be brighter and more vibrant than others. Remember that. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so I'm going to start with this. This is iris. This is the color bloom. Ooh, I'm a little scared because it's brand new. Okay. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh, wait, no, 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 no. I forgot my water. Look at, see, see when I do it and I'm talking at the same time. When I just do my zone, I just do it. Okay, saturate this paper with water first before we put color on it. Uh, Christy, that will make a difference on your vividness of the color as well. Make sure you've saturated that paper. My paper started to lift. It starts to, you know, like it's going to warp just with the water. So, um, yeah, you use the color blooms right now, Dawn. Okay, saturate your paper with water. Okay, there's the iris. And then I'm going to go, I'll Here's leave it. using her only four non-archive sprays, dilutions. Oh, yeah, dilutions are perfect for this. Dilutions are perfect for this. Um, huh, there's a little hair right there. Oh, what the heck? We'll just leave uh, it. The paper shouldn't make that much of a difference for the, the what? The, the paper's not dull in the colors, I don't think. No, I don't think so. Um, let's see here. Okay, and then we're going to use this gorgeous cobalt blue. I really like that boysenberry. Look at that. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah. That um, boysenberry is the match for that magnolia rouge that we had a oh, while yeah. ago from Prima. Oh, look at that. I want a little more blue over there. 
That is really pretty. Okay. I wanted you to be able to see everything with this light, but I know that's going to affect. Okay. So you can see that there is water pooling, puddling. And if it's not moving enough, you could spritz a little more water on it. You could even pick it up at this point and let it drip and drain here and there. This is really cool right here because there's um, a little bit of multiple colors going on right there. And it's starting to dry a bit as I'm talking. So I'm just going to add a little more water. And I feel like the lavender got a little bit more diluted. Okay, and so now I'm going to take the second page and just lay it on top. Try to match it up so I don't end up with a big white strip. And just press it down. Don't move it around, just press it down. I do like doing it in a book because then I can just fold the next page over. And while that is sitting there for one second, not that it needs to, but I'm going to let it because I want to pick up some of this excess that's around the edge. I don't want to waste it. These are gorgeous colors. So I'm going to try to pick it up um, with this paper. This stuff that, that like the overspray. I'm going to try to pick up some of this overspray. That's so pretty. And if you're using dilutions, they are, um, they're bright. They are. They're gorgeous colors. And you can put it down. If you come back and you spray it, it's going to reactivate it. And it's going to turn right back into this runny liquid, which is awesome. You can do so. Oh, look at how cool that is with the, yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's see. Not going to get all of it up, but we'll get some of it up. All right, I don't want that to dry together, so let's pull these apart. Oh, 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 but I'm going to need more room here. <laughs> Let me just shove everything off. <laughs> uh. Julie says Illusions has a pastel color range. Yeah, who wants that, Julie? <laughs> oh, I love her vivid colors. Everything yeah. about her is vivid. vivid and I love. <laughs> what? I said I love her vivid. I don't. I don't yeah, want her. everything about her is vivid, and I I love that. Okay, and then let's get these guys up out of the way here. I'm just kidding. I'm, pastels are not my colors, ladies. <laughs> they're pretty i just would oh, wait really... maybe i should say they're really ugly and maybe <laughs> give me those right Instead of <laughs> uh, it needs more colored sprays so that i can do this what ones are you using chrissy i didn't so see what, what are you using chrissy yeah the dispressed yeah she put it in there so i don't know what she's using so Carrie, um, in, you know, but christy didn't uh the color bloom the prima color bloom that i'm using uh, I just got them in, and every color that I have, I, I have one of every one here, so I can show it to you and demonstrate it. And I, I only have two additional, but and I forgot to look up how much they even were. I will. I was so busy calling them about what they left out of the box that I got a white spot up here that I didn't get. Um, but that's okay. We can take care of that later. Okay, so now um, I've been... We've been talking a lot and sitting here and it is starting to dry. So there's still puddling here, but I need to, I need to reactivate the rest of this because it needs to be wet to work. Julie, right. did you use the illusions? You don't need the distressed ones. No. Dilutions are perfect. This is Diana Reevely's, uh, Diane Reevely's um, formula. So yeah. she uses hers, hers all the time. I mean, obviously. Okay, so I'm going to use this. I don't know if you can see it. I want to make sure my other one is larger. I want to use whichever one is larger. Oh, no. Maybe. Okay, it's not going to cover the whole page, but it'll come close. So you can't see it because it's clear, it's transparent, but it is um, a stencil with circles in it. So I'm going to put it right here. 
And because it's transparent, you can see how it just kind of hugs to the paper and how the the ink grabs it, which is kind of cool. You can't see that on stencils that you can't see through. Okay. The whole key to this technique is um, lots of liquid, lots of water, lots of ink. Now, there's plenty of ink right there. Okay, so remember, once this stencil's down, I'm spritzing the stencil because I need the top of the stencil to be wet when I flip it over, right? So, so I spritz the stencil. And now I'm going to pick up the stencil and I'm just going to flip it right over to the other side, the upside down. So the top that was wet is now on this paper. So I'm getting a positive and a negative. Ha, how do you get a positive and negative of circles? <laughs> uh, it's funny. It works really well if it's a design. Uh, I got so much, had so much liquid there in the center. Let me go back here and pick up some of this. I might have, I got busy talking and did a step wrong, but let's see if we can save it. Yeah, I will still be a cool background. This may not be as intense circles as it would have been. And that's okay. All right, I'm going to set this over here. And it is a little more difficult working with a great big page. So if it's your first time, I would say work with a smaller page. If you have a page this size, I would fold it in half and turn it horizontally so that you can work on half of it and then take half of it to fold over on itself. It's uh, a whole lot easier. Mm -hmm. It's both in your wherever. I'm sorry, say it again see a bird they're doing the Rorschach test they see a bird oh, God. <laughs> I can see that about, Margie says she sees two red eyeballs <laughs> Julie <says one>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chrissy says they're bloodshot eyes yeah Two dots in the eye Margie said kind of like Angela's is kind of like what I see when I look in the mirror in the morning <laughs> yeah uh, why I don't look in the mirror <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to come over here. I have to go. Another of my dear hubby's matriarch has, oh man, has passed away. She was 96 years old. Oh, wow. She fishing, took a nap, a forever nap. Got oh, man, I'm sorry, oh, Sylvia. Oh, sorry, Sylvia. Love you. Love you. Margie will use a teeny tiny book, she said. Yeah, this would be great in teeny tiny books. So I came back just to pick up some of that puddling. And, and I don't want a nice, neat stencil pattern over the whole thing. I want it to come in and out, fade in and here, you know, in here, out there. That's the very cool thing about the background. And so just as simply as that, you've got, we've got a layer of ink and now we've got a layer of a stencil, which is texture. So already you've got two layers and all you did was just spray that down and put your, put your stencil down. Okay, so this one needs to dry. This is a large one. Let's see if I can. I didn't prepare things for these large things to dry. But we will make it work. Let me set that over there and let it dry for a few minutes. Like that. that one's got ink all over the back of it. Okay. Let's see if I can clean this up just a bit. So there's a reason that like this art journal book with the mixed media, the mixed media book from Stamperia, there's a reason that I don't decorate the cover until I'm finished with the inside of the book. And that's because when you're spraying, how are you not going to get e spray ink 
you know, on here and it's going to get on there or paint or whatever. So I just don't even worry about it because it doesn't matter. When it's all done, I cover it with gesso and then I decorate it however I want. But for now, it serves its purpose. All right. So let's do one more. And then we'll come back to doing uh, another, some more steps on them. That will give this one a chance to dry just a little bit more. This time, I'm going to take one of the large pieces of paper, but I'm going to fold it in half. So I did one that was smaller. I did one that was giant, was this page with two. Now I'm going to fold it in half as if this was my book. And I can, um, I can take this and put it into my art journal afterwards if I want. And I think I want, I like leaving these things on. I think I want them to be on top. So I'm going to turn it that way. All right, and then I'm going to take the piece of paper or a piece of paper that I was covering that side with, and I'll cover cover there, okay? And I want it to look flat now. Okay, so this time I'm going to try these Distress Spray Stain Villainous Potion. I'm going to use um, Diane Rubley's Dilusions Periwinkle. And I'll spray that. And if it's light enough, I'll use the prize ribbon. If it's not light enough, then I'll have to decide. Maybe I'll try this. I, I think this has metallic in it. And I don't know if it will work or not work or what difference it would be. It does because it's got um, a, a ball in it to shake it up. So that tells me that it does have metallic in it. All right. So let's start with the periwinkle. No, let's not. Somebody out there screaming. Ju uh, <laughs> Margie's screaming at me. Water first. Water first. <laughs> it's kind of weird talking about it while I'm doing it because, you, you know, when you just do it, you're not telling people about it. You're just doing it and you kind of get in a zone and you do the same process. It's a formula. Doing it. Doing it wrong. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I'm doing. Do the same process every time. And then I start talking about it and I mess that up and forget a step. So water first. Saturate your paper with water. Then color. Then color. So let's try the. Oh, look at that. Ooh, that looks a lot like the cobalt. That's periwinkle. Holy cow. That's gorgeous. Um, we're going to have to try that silver then because, or that pewter, because I don't think that these blues are going to be enough contrast. Oh my goodness, that purple is gorgeous. Okay, and then let's try this. This is brushed pewter, distress spray stain. I think I've had this one a long time. I hope it even sprays. I don't know if I've ever used it, but I've had it a long time. But because it has metallic in it, that makes me, yeah. Question, and it's not spraying. Mm, okay. Um, let's go with this. Let's go back and grab this, this Prima Iris, which was a lighter purple. Whoa, that's a great big, that's a great big spray. So I'm going to try to localize it a little bit there. Okay. That's pretty. All right. Okay. Breaking my own formula. And it's not my formula. It's Diane's. But I want to add a little of this boysenberry. The boysenberry was really pretty. And I feel like it might add a little pop. Let's try it out. Okay. So that side is well saturated. Water and then ink. So we're going to fold it in half or put another page on it. Or turn the page over in the book. And at this point, we're just pressing down. Not rubbing, just pressing. Okay, and then we're going to separate them. Oh, there's a Rorschach test for you. 
<laughs> There's a rib cage. You don't wipe the spray sprayer holes. And you can have lovely clog experience next time. You, I clean mine off all the time. That's how I keep them from getting clogged. Yeah, well, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. I use a pin. <laughs> okay, I'm going to oh, take this one. Spray. I'm going to bring this one over here and put it on half. While it's nice and wet, I'm going to press it down. And we're going to spray that with water because we want the top of the stencil to be wet, remember? We need the top of the stencil to be wet. Is this the second layer or the first layer on this one? This is, that was the first layer of paint for, okay, and, then, and then the first stencil. Okay. I do have blue jeans here. I thought it would be a, just as dark. Maybe it's lighter. Maybe blue jeans is lighter. Okay, and then I'm going to pick it up and just flip it over to the other side where the top that was wet is now touching the ink on that side. When you do this, you get a nice imprint of the paper towels on here, but it doesn't stay. It's no, weird. It, <laughs> it just kind of disappears. But yes. your but your stencil comes out more. As you as you blot up all that excess, the stencil starts to appear and it, it comes out more. These would be really cool paper towels too. Okay, so We've got this one down. Let's pick this one up. And I'm going to dry this one off quickly with a paper towel because I want that ink off for next time. I use warm colors. I don't want purples and blues coming out over it. And if I just wipe it off now while it's wet, then it's clean. I have to get both sides of that one. Okay, let's set that down. Come back with our paper towel blotter. And watch the negative imprint of that stencil start to appear on that page. It's kind of cool. It's actually very cool. I'm gonna take, um, let's see. All right, so I'm going to pick these up and move these over to dry. And we'll go back to the very first one we did. So if you're writing down the steps for your formula, it's water, spray water on the paper, saturate the paper, paper with water, and then your spray. And the spray needs to saturate. Your spray needs to puddle. If your spray is not puddling, if your spray puddles, that's how you know you've got enough. Then put one page on top of the other, press, and open it up. Put your stencil down on the first. For me, that's always the left. Maybe if you're left-handed, it would be the right. I don't know. Never thought about that, but... Put the stencil down on the first side, the side that you did the sprays on. Margie Press said it, it looks like blue jeans, not to get the blue jean color. She said, oh, it, oh, it does look like blue jeans. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. Spray it with water because you want the top of the stencil to be wet. Just leave it for a minute and then pick it up, flip it over to the other side. So the wet stencil is going down on the other side. Press that down. Meanwhile, blot up the first one, pick up the stencil off your second side and blot up the second one. Okay, so here's the very first one we did. Now, to, honestly, to be um, completely dried and cured, about three hours, but you can move forward with this. You know, what, basic things that we're doing here, we can move forward with it. The thing that is the most difficult that really needs time to cure is if you're going to go around your, you can tell down here, it wasn't dry. Um, if you're going to go around something that you stencil on there with a, a gel pen, a white gel pen or a black gel pen or a Posca pen, I used a white Posca. 
pen, which is acrylic ink, then it needs to completely dry. Otherwise it destroys your pen. Um, and what happens if it's not completely dry is when you do the pen, and this is putting acrylic ink out, if the acrylic ink under it isn't completely dry, this wet ink goes to that ink that's half wet and makes it more wet. And then they kind of sort of start to blend together and it ends up kind of grayish instead of white. And then you have to go back over it anyway. So you definitely do want them to dry. Okay, so you can see on here, here's a stencil with some little tiny uh, holes. There's a star. There's a stencil that has a, a different design right there. It's also right there. Here's a different stencil right here. There's the, the second one. So there's layers and layers here and all super, super easy. Um, lots of different ways to do them. So once you've got this, your base page, then we can decide what we want to do on it. On it, um, an easy thing to do on it is to use acrylic paints. And the other technique that we're going to do, I think we'll have time, is using acrylic paints as the base. So if you've got some acrylic paints handy, um, you can use those for this. And then we'll, we'll also use them for the base. Let me get a drink. A really cool look, though, is <clears throat> if you have, say you're using the Distress Spray Stains, and then if you have the Distress Paints, in the matching colors and you can use these with it you can get some really cool um really cool depth looks without having tons of different colors on there it, it has a good effect so when when a new color comes out well they're all available but anytime a new color comes out i always put out the option to, if you want buy the whole set there's eight pieces that gives you the spray stain it also gives you the matching paint it gives you the oxide uh, spray and also um, the oxide um, paint and the reinkers and everything else that comes with it. But if you're wondering how to get those, they are available separately though. Okay, so let's see, what shall we do with this one? One of the things that I like to do is a border, but I may not want the border on until I do some other stenciling. <clears throat> so let's see, I'm going to grab... Um, that's a flower. Okay. We can try that one. So I've got this little flower here. It's kind of gunked up with paint, so it may or may not work, but it probably should. It's kind of big for that page. We'll do it on one of the bigger ones. This is a good stencil with these holes, these bubbles, because they're different sizes. This is really gunked up with paint. I use this a lot. And then this is one of those that we just got recently from Chow Bella that I've already gunked up with paint. <laughs> But this makes that really cool swirl that was down here in the corner, like that. So um, what I've got on here, what do I have? I picked raspberry, fossilized amber, and no, I don't, not that. Picked raspberry, fossilized amber, and barn door. All right, so what I did then was look at my acrylic paints that were sitting around and said, what do I have that is um, like super light. This is an Arteza um, playful pink, but this is the one that gives you that kind of iridescence, this shine right here. <clears throat> so it's kind of a cool one to put on. I could also use um, a white or I could mix this one with another one. Um, let's see, I, maybe I could use a lavender. There's a pearly white. I don't have very many paints right here, so I'm just kind of looking at what I do have, and I'll make something. I'll make something work. So I'm going to. I'm going to put these on with a blending brush. I like to. Do, I really like to do acrylic ink with the blending brush, and then when I'm done, I'm trying to always keep water at my desk because I I never really plan when I'm going to do it. I just do it. And then if I don't have water, I ruin the, the blending brushes. But um, this blending brush I've been using for paint. I said ink, it's paint. Um, and all I do is when I'm done, I peel it off and I just drop it in this little cup of water. 
And then when I'm done for the night or tomorrow or whatever, I'll take them out and I'll rinse them out really good under the tap and they come out just totally fine, nice and clean. And I can do it again with a, a whole nother color. So um, it does not ruin the blending brushes um, unless you just let it sit with the paint on and then it becomes hard. You can still go soak it and get um, that off. So let's get some, let's get some of these bubbles on here somewhere. Um, and I'm looking at what color. I'm thinking if I take some of this cyclamen, which is a lavender, and maybe um, uh, dilute it with a white, that it will be, ooh, pearly white, that it will be more, more uh, pink-like, or at least really light, because I don't really want a purple, although purple will go with it just fine. I don't want purple jumping out, because that's not really the colors of my base. So I just put them right on here and try to get my brush a little centered there. Let's get them out of the way. Get a little bit of each. And I'm just going to kind of blend them up right here. I don't think I have enough of one. I'll grab more of that one. Blend them up right here. See what I've got. All right. And I'm, I like to blend it up like this so that I can then take some from this. If I stick it on there and go straight here, I'm going to have big, strong blobs of that color. If I blend them and then blend it around and I just pick some up like that, um, I'm going to get a much more subtle, softer color. So I'm going to do that. So let's see. Let's stab it a couple of times and just kind of see what we get there. Oh, that's okay. That's cool. All right. I just want a little bit of a little bit of bubbles here and there. And again, the the stencils when they get built up with paint, it's much more difficult to work on on them because um, this blending brush then has to go through so much to get to my paper. So clean stencils are much easier, but you know. Clean stencils in my studio are not um, an oft seen sight. <laughs> my stencils are well loved, well used, and often not super clean. And you can put these wherever you want, as many as you want or as few as you want. Um, let's see, maybe I'll do just a little bit down here on this fossilized amber. It's almost coming out kind of gray, the, it's like a pearly gray with this cyclamen and the pearl white. It's kind of interesting. And got some purple dripped on there from somewhere. Okay. Now, if I wanted it much heavier, I would actually blend it. I just kind of stabbed it because I don't want it to be a solid um, stencil, per se. I just want a little bit here and there. I want another layer is what I want. Okay. So, we'll have to use that again. But I'd like to put some of this on. I really liked this. Um, and it needs, let's see, what did we do with the last one? I wonder, remember how I actually got that um, that look on the yellow. Um, I might have, I'm gonna try, let's see. I'm gonna need another blending brush. Let me grab one here. Hi, Tara. Good to see you. You might have said Tara was here and I didn't hear, sorry. Yeah, I was trying to get this paint off my <laughs> now i'm gonna wipe the paint off of this before i put this on and go to another color um even dip it in there or grab a baby wipe or something because i don't really need all that purple going through if i'm trying to do 
This is fossilized amber. Okay, so I'm going to try an experiment. I want to experiment with, I have not done this. I want to experiment with a little bit of this fossilized amber and this pearl white, um, pearl white paint. Now I could go dig out the fossilized amber paint, but I don't want to make you wait for that. So I want to take, let's see, maybe I'd be better off doing this than spraying it. I want to take uh, some of the fossilized amber and some of the pearlized white, put them together, and see what kind of thing I get. I would just, uh, you know, pour some out, but we all know what'll happen if I try that. <laughs> so Margie's going, thank you for not pouring that out. All right, so let me get some of this pearlized white on here first. I don't want that lavender. I just want the white. Okay. And then I'm going to come over here to this fossilized amber. Oh, I hope this isn't a mistake. But, you know, we don't know unless we try. So I'm going to come down here. And this one, I'm going to blend it a little bit more like this. Try to get a little bit more. And I really don't see anything at all here. But I have a feeling, I'm hoping, when I pick it up, I will see the iridescent. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Um, I can't even get an angle where I can see it, where you can see it. There, there we go. Finally, maybe kind of sorta. Okay, so I need to go with. Um, I want to go with a smaller, a different. Let's go with a different design. And I want to be careful when if I'm blending this one that it doesn't blend right underneath the stencil or I'm not going to get any of that design. And right there, I'll cover that little white corner a bit. There. Now that's a much better look at what it is. And it's coming out really nicely on the pink and the barn door. So let's go over here. I haven't even had to re-ink this because there's plenty of paint there. It doesn't take very much. A little bit there. Let's do it. A little bit right here. And those little bits peeking through here and there are what are so cool. It's when when I look at, at mixed media and I see, you know, stuff that shows me that there's all kinds of layers, that's what I love because I could imagine what's underneath and the layers and, you know, the time it took and what's on top of what. And, and that's just fascinating to me. I really enjoy seeing all those layers. So let's see if we can pick up any more without that purple. Bring it over here. That will be the end of that. Okay, so we got a little bit of that here and there. Okay, so we got a little bit of dots. We did our, our first stencil that gave us the, and that it looks completely different. This one looks imprinted into the, into our paper because we did it with the water and the ink. And then these are on top. So we've got the original one, we've got this one, and we've got the um, a little light down here. It's a little bit of dark. Needs a little bit of dark something. Yeah, I'm gonna try adding a little bit of that purple to it. Let's just see what happens. I love experimenting. If you don't like something, you get done with this and you don't like it, just leave it, let it dry, and then cover it with gesso. Cover it with gesso and start again. Use different colors or a different stencil or, you know, whatever it is that you tried that you didn't like, leave it out. Okay, so that was, seemed a little light to me on top of the fossilized amber because it was amber on amber. So all I did was add just a tiny bit of that lavender, that cyclamen into it. And I didn't go over the whole thing. I just kind of blotted it here and there. And so it just added some a little bit of depth to that um, corner. This corner could probably use a little too here too because it's light. So let's just give it a just a little bit of something. We're gonna do a border, so not really worried about the all the way to the corners and that type of thing. Okay, so we've done several layers, and because I want to try to get to the paint one, let's go. Let's go to a border. Let's move to a border. So if you have a lot of you have, if you have um 
any stencil will work, but if you have the stencil from Savannah, there are a lot of borders on here. And they're all pretty awesome. You can pick and choose any one of them. They all work great. Um, in fact, this one border here, you can see the black paint. That's this border right down the center. That's what I did right here. Okay, that's easy enough. But you can use any stencil. You can use um, a stencil that has a, a large design. I'm looking to see if I have one. That's handy. I, tr I tried not to pull out all of them, so it wouldn't take me forever to find what to use, and I didn't pull out anything of that type. But you could take a maybe a stencil that is full of diamonds, and then you put it over here, and all you're going to do is just stencil that one row of diamonds down it, or squares, or circles, or whatever it is. So, but I'm going to show you how I use this one that has a lot of borders on it without and be able to get the one I want. Let's see, we're on this one. Which one do we want? That's kind of cool, that diamond there. Um, that's kind of cool. I really kind of like those circles there. It's different. Okay, so this is how I'm gonna do it. I'm going to use some of my painter's tape. Somebody said to me last week, I have used this painter's tape almost every day since I got it. How did I ever live without it? I know, I know right? Use it for everything. And this is one of the best, one of the easiest. So I'm going to take my tape and I'm going to mask off anything that's on this side. So I want to make sure I get the whole stencil where I can get paint in it but I want to make sure that I cover completely the stencil next to it so paint doesn't ease in or ooze into that little, little groove there. Okay, and then I'm just going to tear off the excess. All right, and I only need it on that one side because I'm right-handed. I put it on the left. And then I'm going to... I think I will wipe up this purple paint before I stick my hand in it. <laughs> what do you think? But I made the first one. I stuck my book in it, so why not? That's why I don't do the covers till the end. <laughs> Murder yellow circles. <laughs> Loving the border stencil. Where is it from? Oh, this one is, uh, it's a Stamperia. I might even have some in stock. I'd have to check. It's a Stamperia, and it's from the collection Savannah, the one that's... Um, like the safari, the African safari. It's very cool. All right, I'm going to use black paint. This is Stamperia Allegro. I've got lots of Stamperia paint in stock. I ordered a ton because I love it. I'm really, really liking the quality of the paint, the ease to use. And I'm going to use another uh, blending brush. Um, this is just a regular blending brush prop. Okay, so this is the border I want. I masked off here. I'm going to bring it over here and put the right side. I don't have to mask the right side off because I'm just going to line it up with the edge of the page. Then it doesn't matter if I get a little bit over here. It's not going anywhere. It's not on my page. So I'm checking it top to bottom to see how, oh, wow, it's the perfect height. That's awesome. Okay, so my stencil is completely on. And I'm just going to hold that down. And away we go. So a little bit of black paint. Again, I don't want to pick it up and then just plop it on here. I'm going to have big black blobs, and I guarantee you they're going to go underneath the stencil. You're not going to have a clean stencil, and you won't be happy. So just pick some up out here and blend it around. Blend it around so that you can get, get it into your blending brush, your blending foam, whatever you're using. Um, on, in this, I really like the foam better. And I will start out with pouncing it instead of blending it until I know exactly how much I have on there. Because if I start blending it and I happen to have a bunch on there that I didn't realize, then all I'm going to do is shove it underneath the stencil. And I do not want that. I want a nice clean stencil border. There we go. Okay. And just go down. Get more as I need it. I think I can find it. <laughs> the, oh, Savannah. What's the number? I know you've got everything, Savannah. Uh, I don't have it written on it. Oh, wow. I know. 
as we got new ones, I wrote it on it, but I didn't go back. I haven't yet gone back. I need to, um, that's part of organizing my, I might bring them to retreat and organize my stencils there is going back to the ones I already had and, and putting the number on them. Um, KSTD <laughs> about that. That's, yeah, not that part. <laughs> that's as far as I can go. <laughs> okay. And so when I'm putting this down here, it's interesting because I'm blending it, but I'm not really blending it. I want you to, to know that, that I'm not really rubbing it back and forth. I set it down on it and then I'm moving the foam back and forth, but it's really kind of staying in the same place. I just move it back and forth. And what that does is push the blending foam down onto all the spots and it pushes ink there, but it doesn't rub it around so that it picks up the stencil or forces it under the stencil. It's just kind of a... I don't even know what to call the technique, but it's just something, I don't know when I figured out that if I do that, I get a cleaner pencil. Look at that. That is very cool. You can even use that with something retro and make it look like a record. Yeah. Okay. So for me, I have to turn my book right-handed. I have to stick with my right hand. I have to turn my book and go this direction. So again, I'm going to line. I'm going to see how much space between them. I can put this over the edge of the one that's there, line the edge of the next stencil up with the edge of my paper all the way. Okay, I'm going to go to the center here because the book closes, you know, folds, so I'm going to have to hold it carefully on both sides. So need a little more paint. Let's get that rolling. And I tend to use the stickier tape when I do this because I want it to stay on the stencil. I don't want a super light pack where it will um, it maybe, you know, lift a little bit and the paint will go underneath it. So the ones we had, um, the ones I brought back from the trade show that we had were green, yellow, and blue. The green, the green is the, the tackiest, the stickiest of all of them. Blue is in the center and the yellow is the lightest. If you want to need to make a note on yours so that you remember that. Okay, now I got a partial one here, so I need to line this up exactly on top of it. And then line the rest of it up with the edge of my book. Super easy to do a border this way. Border stamps take on all new meaning, right? When you start doing stuff like this. Any stamp that has um, some nice big open spaces. Diamonds make a cool border. If you have a stencil that has diamonds or um, hexagons. And squares can even be turned on their point. This is a pretty big stencil this other one was pretty small so this one's taken a little bit longer because it's a it's a large pattern but that's okay because i think it's gonna look cool and you can take a large pattern for a larger paper you could use a smaller pattern for you know your smaller book if you want you could even do swirls just put the mask the stencil off put it up against the edge and when you um go over it, you'll get just the part of the swirl that you've left open there. That would be cool too. Uh, let's see here. That went right to the edge. Oops. Oh, went crooked on that one. Uh-oh. <laughs> I have to be very careful that I line it right up with the edge of the book or I do the same thing. That's why I need those guides. And so if it's built in... All the better for me. All right. Now I like the black contrast with these warm colors, but if you wanted to, you could add a little white to the black to tone it down a bit. You could do it in any color you want. You don't have to use black. You could have come in with a dark brown. You could come in with a metallic gold. That would have been pretty too. 
let's oh i'm gonna have to get a little more paint. say so let's see if we can get to the end without getting more paint but i realize there's one more one more side the what i can't get my mind up straight on the second part of it <laughs> ah. <laughs> oops i got one more one more to do here did you find your savannah or using a different one i found a savannah but it's just i don't get it laid down right see i don't get it that it's not moving, but I just can't mm -hmm. get, it. get it lined up where it feels like it's. It looks straight when I do. Uh, all right, I'm going to need a little more paint. Shouldn't be much. The last side here. Let's see. that one <laughs> you could also spray a border yeah just lay it down spray <laughs> So do some funky lines through instead of bo around border. Do the border across and like partially through, just little bits and pieces of border, not a whole. You can also just do corners, guys. You don't have to do the whole thing on a border. I could have taken this and just done a corner, two opposite corners or all four corners or whatever. You don't have to have a border. And maybe you, you just want to, when it's dry, take your ink and ink around the edge to let that be your border and then do something in the corners or, um, you know, <laughs> decorate. First mm -hmm. car, driving at night. She was driving at night and couldn't see. Uh -huh. And she was like, oh, yeah, turn on the headlights. Yep, it really happened, she said. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was driving at night and I knew I needed to turn on the headlights, but I couldn't find them. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't my car. It was a brand new car. And I, I didn't know where to, where they were. And I'm like, crap, here I am. I'm already out here on the road and I can't. Yeah, I had to spot the pool where I was on a highway. Yeah. I, <laughs> I can't find it. Turn lights on. Because they weren't automatic. I was used to having them on the yeah. road. My, didn't my, have yeah, automatic. exactly. Like, oh, my God. The day runners <laughs> and at night they go on automatically. And you're like, what? Yeah. My headlights yeah. aren't on? <laughs> yeah. That's what I was like. What are you talking about? You have a car? Yeah, who looks stupid? Me or the car? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm trying to eke out the uh, paint, enough paint out of this one for this very last one. So I don't have to get more paint out of the bottle because this is the very last. But I don't want it to be gray. I want it to be black. Come on. It's sticky because there's hardly any paint left. Let's see how it did. Ah, not bad. Okay. All right. So there, let's make sure we turn it the right direction. Okay. There's our border. This really feels retro to me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when is sent? Okay. Hold on. Okay. So... I put these on first so it would be coming out from underneath the border. Okay. And so then you can decorate it however you feel. So you can see how if you go through one day and you make a bunch of backgrounds and just let them dry. And then another day you feel like working with stencils and you come back and you do some different stencil things. And another day you, you know, decide to decorate one. Um, let's see. Okay. So let me show you this. What I did with this one. I just took, after doing all those steps, I just took a butterfly stencil and did the butterfly with a little bit of black and a little bit of lavender. So there's both black and lavender on the wings. And I'm not sure that that's so awesome, but it kind of sort of works. And then didn't quite let it dry. It needed to dry more, but then I outlined it with a white Posca pen. And so it's very simple. 
but it's it's a it's a great journal page and it's art journal page and it's it's just very simple. You could call that complete or you could not. You could call it not complete. I might come back and decide that I want to decorate other things. I might decide I want to just leave it and take my white Posca pen and write journal, you know, down in some of these spots. And that's, you know, the beauty of the art journal is that I can journal and I can art at the same time. I don't have to sit down and write a full page of stuff. I could just put a thought in here. I could just write a quote that I saw that I really liked in here, whatever it is. So let's look at this one and see what it is looking very retro to me. So that big old flower that we had here almost kind of seems to uh, fit. I wonder if it goes right in the middle, how that would. Um, <clears throat> And I'm wondering about using the barn door paint. I don't necessarily want it black, but we used barn door spray. So I'm thinking, um, and I have never opened the barn door. I've never opened the barn door, Margie. <laughs> never opened the barn door paint. So let's try that. So the old ones came with daubers on the top. They no longer come with daubers. You can get them if you want, but they don't come with daubers. They come with little pour spouts because it's much easier. Um, I'm just going to do, uh, I don't care if it gets a little black in it. In fact, I'd kind of like it to get a little black in it. So I'm gonna pour a little bit on top of that black and I wonder if I can clean this brush off enough black. Wow, there's hardly anything there anyway. The edge, let me get the edge. Uh, so I might get just a little bit of black. Um, let me decide, do I want that right in the middle where it folds in the middle? And then I could write on both sides. Or, because I don't really want the whole big flower there, it's just, um, really big. I could do it going off the edge, but then it's going to cover the border. If that's the case, then I should have done it before the border. For me personally, I would like prefer that. Um, here's a couple other flowers. Let's see what else is right here. Oh, here's the butterflies that I used. Oh, wait a minute. Well, angels aren't retro. I don't know why it looks. Does it look retro to you guys? It just looks really retro to me. I've got an angel stencil here, which is definitely not retro. Does that look retro to you? Yep, to me it does. Yeah, I think it's these look like records, kind of, sort of. So I was thinking about using some of these angels, but angels aren't retro. <laughs> and that might just look funky. Um, hmm. I didn't pull out a whole lot of stencils be able to oh oh okay you know what let's just do this quickly because i want to go to the in fact let's not do this let's go to the let's go to the paint technique i really want to show you the paint technique okay. um because okay so you know i can stencil on it i can do whatever i want i can continue to decorate it with stickers with whatever or i can write on it so i will continue to do that but let's go to the paint technique let's pick another that should be dried enough that we can close it. Okay. I'm going to do it in this one, which is actually, I'm going to use just a single sheet of the, the bigger. This one does not um, get folded over on itself. So I'm going to use a single sheet. Those are fairies. Whatever you had out were fairies. I didn't see. Yeah, they are fairies. What did I say? Oh, I said angels, didn't I? Yeah. They're fairy. I'm sorry. They're fairies. They are definitely fairies. Uh, yeah. Why well, the big red stop signs, Julie? They're what? What's what's with the big? Those are fairies. I said angels. I meant fairies. They're fairies. Sorry. <laughs> They're fairies. Okay. So this one, we're going to use paint. We're going to um, take three colors of paint again. Is that lid off somewhere. Yep, you do. That's yeah, why. Oh, put the lid on it. 
It's just put a lid on it. Put a lid on it. I'm going to try to put some of this red paint back here. I'm not using it yet without getting the black up. All right. Maybe I'll use that one. Barn door. Um, yeah, that won't really dry out. Okay. We want three colors, either warm or cool. Doesn't matter. And this time, acrylic paint. Three colors, acrylic paint. Uh, acrylic paint. Let's see. There's a cool. There's a cool. There's a warm. There's a warm. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go outside my comfort zone. My comfort zone is to grab these three for cool. Turquoise, navy blue, and cyclamen, because I love those. Outside my comfort zone would be to grab these. Cookie orange and brick red because i don't know i just that would not be so anyway um we are going to get rid of that sharp point first Put that away we're going to need something to put it down with either a brush or a sponge or dauber like this um doesn't matter any if you've got those little cosmetic sponges those little triangle ones they work great but we want uh first i need a baby wipe to see if i can get some of this black up so i don't end up with black in the middle of my warm colors okay there we go Okay, so we're going to take three warm colors of, or, or cool, doesn't matter, your choice, three colors of acrylic paint in either warm or cool. And I'm going to use brick red, which doesn't look very red to me, but it does look brick, cookie, and orange. That's a really pretty orange. That's not what I expected. That's awesome. Okay. And I will grab these other, let's see, grab these other daubers that I had and use those. I'm going to put different ends on them. Um, I had one more. She'd use all the colors. <laughs> what? She would, use, she would use all the colors is what Tara said, whatever color. Oh. <laughs> well, yeah, you can. You can use whatever you want. To know that the technique will work every time, if you pick three colors that are either warm or either cool, it'll always work. So I will put this on here. It's an old sponge that just can be used up. And there's the other one. The Imperia right there. Stamperia right there, Julie. The Yeah, these um, Allegro paints are Stamperia. I get tons of Allegro paints. I like them a lot. Use them for gel gel plating too. Um, one more. Lagoon. Too late. She's got red orange colors out, ladies. And we want lagoon. I got warm colors out. If I, get done, if I get done with this, then I'll try a try a a cool color. But um, okay, so I've got three. Just so I don't completely mix them. There, they go with each of those three colors, and I'm just going to take some of the color. And again, I'm going to spread it around out here and I'm just going to get some color on the page. This is super easy. This is like kindergarten when you just got to play. You could do it with fingers when you just got to do finger painting. Ooh, that's a really pretty brick. I like it. I don't know how much I want. I need to make sure I got all the other colors too. So you can use the same dauber. I want to, because I haven't used these colors, I want to try to get through colors just so I know what they're like. And let's do a little bit over here. You can make them little small areas. You can make them great big areas. Ooh, those started to blend together and that looks really cool. Let's see what this orange looks like. Glennis is going to like this one. This whole thing is her colors. Hi, Glennis. The fall colors. Looks 
looks like I should die cut some leaves out of this is what it looks like. Those are great colors for. Okay. So now I come back in and say, I need more of that brick. I didn't go too heavy because it was the first color. I didn't want to not leave room for the others. Just keep doing all three of them. Let's see. They're kind of mixing. That's okay. It's, it's actually honestly going to be okay. Um, you really do want a little bit of um, a little bit of mix. Hang on before this drops on that. Let me get that. Okay. So we just want like splotches here and there. Bits and pieces and um, ba -doo -doo -doo, what do I have? I need this over here. Some of that over there. And some of this. Where? Where don't I have any of that? I have it everywhere. So let's just start filling in with. I said use a sea sponge for extra texture. Good idea. Say it again. Oh, sea sponge. Yeah. Yeah, you can actually. Um, a lot of times I'll put this down first and then go back with whatever paint is sitting here and then just sea sponge over it, which kind of mixes the colors and puts that texture on. That's yeah. If you want to do the whole thing that way, that absolutely it's great texture. Okay. So then if I do this, I'm going to get some good texture too. And I don't want to completely mix those. So I thought I had, I don't. All right. All right. I'm going to give it a little spritz of water. Not a lot. Not like when we were using inks. This is paint but just a little spritz of water. And then if you give it a little spritz of water and you take your blending brush over it, you can get a, a tiny bit of lift, which gives you some texture. This one is also cool with the oxides, but um, you do have to heat set it. Oh, be careful, baby. Hey, Charlie. Hi. Hi. Okay. Just a minute. Hi. Okay. So now we got that covered, right? There you go. It doesn't have to be. I mean, we're not looking for anything. We're just looking for coverage. I know. You want that? You want to do this? You want to do that? Put some on the edge. Okay. So once we've got that covered, then we do need it to dry. Huh? So let me grab my no, don't do that. Ranger tool. We do want this to dry. <laughs> you could even flick a little bit of or spray a little bit of black or white or dark brown, maybe on this one or um, some contrasting color that's still in the warms or still in the cools, whichever you're in. Okay. It doesn't have to be, it has to be dry enough that I could take a pencil and write on it. That's good. But paint dries fast. Acrylic paint dries really fast. All right. And then you need a pencil. I didn't tell you you need a pencil, but um, a pencil or um, a pen or, you know, really anything, just anything that you can write with. And now we're going to oh. see if we can flatten out the paper. Charlie! Hi, Charlie! No. Uh-oh. Charlie, you're going to get in trouble. Oh, you open the mic, you little turd. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yell that. Uh, okay. No. So, Hi! Hi, Charlie! Hi! Hi! So now if you look at this and you look at it and find little points of interest. A little bit of wet paint right there. I'm just going to touch it, make a little texture, whatever, doesn't matter. Find little points of interest, things, just places that you like. I kind of like these little um, striations that were made by using the blending brush. Okay. And so then you're going to go to some of those and just draw 
shapes. You could use all circles. You could use circles and squares or um, triangles, whatever you want. But you're just going to draw. And don't you don't need to get out a ruler and, and do that. This is an art journal. It's supposed to be, you know, something that you drew. So there's some cool stuff here. I'm going to do like this and just kind of give myself a little mountain over here. It goes right off the edge. Okay. I like this area right here. I'm going to draw a circle. Not a round circle. Doesn't matter. Okay. Where's some other little points of interest? This is kind of cool over here. Let's draw a square. Okay, we just kind of want these all over the page. So um, I like these little dots here. So I'm going to make a circle around that. And I also like the contrast of that nice bright orange right there with that dark brown. And I like the contrast of, of the um, brick with that bright orange too. It's really not that bright. It's more, I don't know, it's not even totally pumpkin-y. It's a different orange than I expected, but I like it. Orange is not usually my favorite color. It's not even a go-to color for me. So, okay. I'm going to put a little triangle right here just because there's some space. And I've got some room over here. Um, I only got one. Uh, I only need one square. doesn't matter. I'll put another triangle or a partial. Let's see. Maybe I could do a partial circle. I'll do a triangle right here. And then a partial circle. Okay, Charlie wants to say bye. Bye. Oh, Charlie, bye. 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 <laughs> bye. 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 And here's um, Glennis is what she had so far. Oh, Glennis, that's so pretty. Wow. That is really pretty. I yeah. love that. Um, I love your border. That is really pretty. Okay, so. Now you should be able to see, you probably couldn't see before when I was drawing, but now you can see all my pencil marks, right? Just drew some shapes here and there, everywhere, okay? And you can do a zigzag pattern, you could do circles, you could do, it needs to be something that closes, you know, whether it's diamonds or circles or squares or whatever, whatever it is that you like. All right, so then, you're going to choose one color. I need, ooh, I really like, I'm going to, I'm going to mix one to make it lighter. I'd really like a cream. I think you're going to choose one color and we're going to, we're going to paint in all the negative space. Okay. So I drew a circle. This circle is now, let's call it a focal point, just so that you know the difference between that. The negative space is the space around it. So we're going to paint all the way around the outside of everywhere that we drew um, a design, a shape, uh, anything. All right. And I would really like to have a cream, and I don't. I'm going to take some of this cookie, and I'm going to mix it with some white. I've got some white here. And try to make me a cream. That's the pink. See if I can make me a cream without having to get up and go get one. You know, I've got one, but I don't want to get up and go get it. Waste time. So there's some white that's just about gone. All right, I'll take the brush I was using for cookie. That's, yeah, that's the one. And let's get that white going, add some cookie, and see if we can make that really light. Sandy, she needs yeah. some cookie. We need some cookies. Really? Sandy! <laughs> we got a draw on here? I don't want to draw on this. <laughs> that's really pretty. Uh, draw a whole bunch of shapes and you might want to do um, small shapes and lots of them because that is really pretty. Yeah. I should have told you, you're not trying to make something pretty. You're just trying to put it. Yeah, yeah, that one's, I'm not doing that one. <laughs> um, actually, I don't know why I did this. I would, I would normally grab a um, brush for this. So I will try to use the, the paint off this blending brush and then I'll just grab a regular brush. Actually, that's not working badly. That's pretty easy to do. So all we're going to do is paint all the way around those shapes that we drew 
which is the negative space. There we go. <laughs> You're going to do one that it didn't you don't like, like so much you want to keep it. <laughs> yeah, I messed with the other one. <laughs> yeah. I should have said, don't try to make something you want to keep here because you're going to lose that whole. I didn't. Sorry. <laughs> uh, okay. So, yeah, that's a little weird with this blending brush. I should have just grabbed my brush. I don't know what I was thinking. Because normally I don't have anybody I'm talking to when I'm doing this, and I just do it. Weird. Okay, but I can fill those in. I can grab a brush to get right up around them if I need to. It actually fills in nice and, and smoothly, though. <laughs> it's funny. Never thought of just painting with a blending brush. Hmm, new technique is coming out. Going around the circles. Oops, I just went over my triangle. So you can use white if you want. If I used um, cool colors, I probably would have used white. But that's why I wanted a cream with the warm colors. I'm trying to get a baby wipe out here to see if I can save my triangle. But I don't want to take off the paint that's underneath the cream either, which it probably will. So. All right. All right. Just paint, right? Yep, just paint. Just paint. Yeah, how's Laura Glennis? We miss her. Yeah, we do. Okay, I'm going to grab this brush, get it a little bit wet. I need some more white. Now this white's almost gone. Let's just use it up, and get rid of it. There we go. All right. That's going to be a little easier, I think. Okay. So we're painting all the negative space around. And don't worry about the lines. I mean, some of my circles are changing shape as I paint around them. It doesn't matter. I mean, trust me, for this, it doesn't matter. It's not a, not the point of the, the shape. The exact shape is not the point. So just fill in the negative space with paint. The advantage to drawing some big shapes is you don't have so many little tiny things to go around. <laughs> Yeah, I noticed how you told me to draw the tiny shapes. <laughs> no, only because you really like that paper, and I thought it was really pretty too, but I like your idea of saving it and doing another one that's just... <laughs> just, throw, just smear out some colors, that's all. It was really pretty, that one. All right, going to need some more white. See, this one, I think I prefer doing it with the cool colors and the white, using the white to do the um, negative space. But because I haven't ever done the, the this kind of sort of combination, thought I would try it. Step outside my comfort zone and try it. I'm always willing to try things. At least once, usually a couple times, because if it doesn't work great the first time, got to give it another try or two just to see if it is just a little learning curve. But for me, it usually is. And honestly, okay, an art journal is very personal. An art journal is whatever you want it to be. It's just whatever, if you want to, if you're having a bad day and you just want to go in it and scribble, that's what the art journal is for. If you feel like drawing something or trying to draw something that you've never done before and nobody's going to see it, you don't have to worry about what it looks like. That's what it's for. If you want to write down, you know, something by it. Great. If you just want collage in black because you're angry, that's what it's for. It's, it's for whatever you want it for. That's what an art journal is. 
And above all, it's to experiment, to experiment and try. And it's it's a safe, it's, you know, it's your free zone. Your art journal is your free zone. So I'll fold this in half and stick it into an art journal. And you can do pages like this, and then you can punch holes and put them all in on rings to make your own art journal, if you prefer, rather than a book, if you prefer to have flat pages like this. So don't be afraid to just try things and don't worry about what they're going to what they're going to look like cuz the the truth is if you never try and i say fail loosely because pff, how do you, what you know what's a fail art is art it's whatever you want it to be but if you try something and it fails to be what you want it fails to meet your expectations so you call it a failure you're never going to learn to do it the way you like it because you have to get past that oh that didn't work you know, to try something else. So the only failure in art is not even trying. To me, that is a failure. And that's sad. Writing on. What? I can't write on this. It's, I can't see it. Um, use a white, um, either a white uh, Stabilo yeah. or a white Posca or something like that. I did it with pencil and then I painted over the line and made that smaller than it was. And the pencil came through what I painted. That's kind of weird. Okay. That one too. I, do you see, I can't stay outside the lines. Yeah. <laughs> I like the second mixture that I got. It's better, it's a little lighter. <laughs> That's pretty colors. That'll, that one will be really pretty. I, I would do that in white, honestly. I would paint your negative space in white on that one. It'll be gorgeous. I can't even make shapes on it. I can't see it. <laughs> so Use a white, do you have a white Posca? Um, try try a, a, just like a soft pencil. Do you have a charcoal pencil? It doesn't have to be dark, only you have to, you know. Look, it's not there. It works on, it works on this blue. Yeah. It don't work on the it's purple. Not it not on the dark. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so draw some with that. Just. Because that's about all you can do. Draw some with that. <laughs> I take it back. It's not working. <laughs> my Posca. Make it work. Make it work. White Posca will work. I know. I gotta find it. <laughs> it's oh, never it there when you need it. Now I moved it. Um, it's a die, Carrie. That was a die. Oh, yeah, he was going to trace a die, a flower die. Yeah. Okay, so now, now you have the negative space all blanked out. And now you take the shapes that you drew and you turn those into art. Like I did, I drew that and then I, all of a sudden it seems like mountains and the sun and moon and whatever. But... I'm just looking at it for a minute to kind of see what I want. Like I might take a black Posca and I might write up this hill, down this hill, up this one and down that one. And then I might write something across there to put a, a sentiment or phrase in there, a quote. I like writing quotes in books that I can go back and read all the time because there's really good quotes and they're to me they're motivating. You might, um, you might look at something like if Candy did, you you could you might end up doing shapes that in the end they look like leaves. This kind of looks like the center of a flower, so maybe I would take this. Let's see. I know this isn't dry though. My Posca is not going to do well. Let me give it a quick dry. Oh, good. Out there bribing Poppy. <laughs> Poppy's bribing him, I should say. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's, there's a couple other techniques with negative space that is that are fun. We'll have to do on another day. That don't even require paint and ink. All right, where are my Poscas? Let me see if I can 
I'm going to use black. Yeah, the, the trouble with this is if it's not dried all the way, then... Yeah, I think that's mine's not dry. It still will write, but then it, it can really destroy your yeah, product. So, that's... Uh, do you have a... Um, uh, what about just using a marker? Um, a I, it's, it's working. I just got okay. too much on that one. It started coming out. Okay. At least just enough to, to see your, your outline, whatever it is. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go outline this shape. When I look at this triangle, it makes me think of a cat's nose. Because, <laughs> you know, you always draw cat's noses in triangles. Makes me feel like it needs whiskers coming out of it. Hmm. But I'm not sure <clears throat> what you can do. There's okay, there's a couple things you can do. If you really like the color that is inside here, you can leave the color and then you can do all the artwork on the on the negative space that you just colored in. So I could do this. And I think that's maybe what I will do. Because these shapes aren't necessarily jumping out at me as to something I want to draw with them or create with them. So um, I won't put my hand on that and smear it. Posca pen is acrylic ink. So just remember when you put it down, you need to give it a minute to dry before you set your hand on it. So you don't end up with acrylic paint all over your hand. Um, Dries super fast, but who was that? The daisies and hearts was the extent of her doodling when she was growing up. No. Oh. <laughs> um, okay, so. Um, Marty said that triangle looks like candy corn to her. <laughs> oh, okay. And it's the right colors, huh? Almost. Okay, so do um, turning the negative space Leaving the color, say you really, Glennis looks at this and she's like, I love the color. I don't want to do anything over that color. Those are my favorite colors. So then you take the negative space and that's what you turn into art. And so I've got a little strip down here. Maybe I decide to just do something like this. Two, three, four, five, six. And I remember doodling Julie and thinking that I needed to draw something, you know, whether it was the flowers, the daisies, whatever it was. And I didn't feel like I was a very good artist. So that didn't work for me. And I never felt like I did it right. So when you're, when you're thinking about doodling with art journaling or gel plating or all those things, think more about mark making than doodling. Because all I'm doing is making marks here. They don't even have to be the same distance apart because mine sure aren't. I'm going to do that all the way across. And then I'm going to come back here. And I'm going to do that just for some contrast. So. It doesn't have to be any big, you know, piece of art, any big flower, or any, you know, specific design. Um, another technique that we'll do another day does give you specific design and you don't even have to draw it. And I really like that one because I just don't feel like I'm a very accomplished drawer. So we'll do that one again. We'll again, we'll do that one soon. Um, we need to have a drawing because it's still March, which is still National Craft Month. And so I pulled something out to give away today. And I have, I do have a D-stash offer. Oh, I didn't want to do this one. Candy twisted my arm the other day and made me do it. <laughs> I've been saving him because I really want to make a series of journals. And she said, are you really going to get to that? <laughs> and she's right. She's right. I'm probably not just because I don't have time. 
but I would love to see them done in a series of journals and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, I'm gonna stop at this one so that we can do the drawing. You guys can keep working on yours. So using the negative space, all I did is draw some, draw some marks there. And then I can go through and do the same thing here. I need to go around. First, I'll go around all my shapes to make sure that I've preserved the shape that I uh, drew. And it doesn't, my triangles are skewampus. My circles are not round. It doesn't matter. That's art. And then maybe you come through here and you just do a whole bunch of You know, so maybe I do a whole row of those up and down and around this mountain and then something else. And it's a it's a great way to just create a, an art journal page without feeling the stress and pressure of I'm going to put something over this for sure. OK, I'm going to take off my gloves now. These gloves make your hands sweat, huh? Yeah. I didn't even take mine off. I couldn't handle them. <laughs> I don't care for them, but I do need to keep clean hands. All right, and I'm going to grab this so that I can protect. Uh, Candy, what are we going to use for hashtag for the drawing? I don't know. Hashtag M O N one. It is Monday. No, let's just do M J one. Monday jump start one. Make it short. Short. Okay. Hand. Hashtag MJ1. I was doodling, dang it. I, I know. Sorry. <laughs> I'll get the giveaway going here, and Candy will get the hashtag in. So go ahead and start putting in the chat. Hashtag MJ1. Monday Jumpstart1. Hashtag MJ1. Nice and short. Short and sweet. That's what we like. MJ1. There we go. All right. Let me share my screen. All right. We are going to draw and give away a brush cleaner. No, you can't see it very well. You'll see it when we go back to the full screen. This is from Studio Light Essentials Collection, a brush cleaner. Clean your brushes easily. Simply pop it on your fingers. It is flexible. It is long lasting. It is made of silicone. And you pop it on your fingers and rub your brushes on it and cleans them. I have one. Um, what did I tell you? Order, pick up, and go get it. Bring, what? Oh, okay. MJ1, is everybody in? Let's see what we've got. Whoops, not that one. Uh, we've only got seven entries so far. We do have 17 people in here. So if you want to get in, if you want to get in the drawing, let's get in now. MJ1. Ronnie has a sick teenager. Aww. Charlie's not feeling too well today either. To tell him he's taking his favor down. So. I didn't see Bonnie. Hi, Bonnie. And hi, Sarah. Yeah. She just come in here just a minute ago. Okay, we got a few more. And they might have been working along with us and so couldn't chat. That's that's understandable. All right, we ready? Oh, Margie didn't get her groceries. You still haven't gotten your groceries? Ever? Ever? No. <laughs> Margie, did you call them? No explanation, none at all. Oh. Wow. It's just crazy. Congratulations, Dawn. Whoop, whoop. Dawn is the winner. Congratulations. Dawn gets the brush cleaner. I am just going to Sharpie her name right on there. Dawn giveaway. Okay. Margie, did you call them? Congrats, Don. That's awful. Congratulations, Don. Okay, I guess I better hurry and show you these before. Actually, there's oh, there's two things. There's that set, and then there's there's a Dragonology handbook. 
that I would hear with. That one. What? Which one are we doing first? It says, let's do this one first. Let's do this one. Okay. So these are brand new photo albums. And I didn't buy them for photo albums. There's actually only a couple pages in it. Three pages or something. I, which didn't matter to me. Because I was going to cut them apart anyway. And use them to make uh, journal covers. Look how cute that is. Front and back. A winter journal cover. If you wanted to do um, like a solid color on the back, you could actually get two journals out of one of these covers. But I think that's adorable. But the best part is that there's winter, spring, summer, and autumn. Wouldn't that be, okay, guys, tell me I'm not crazy. Wouldn't this be a super cute series of journals? I just thought it would be, let's get that out of here before something gets paint on it that shouldn't have paint on it. I thought this would be a super cute series of journals, and that's why I got them, because I wanted to make a series of journals. And Candy's right. I'm not going to get to them because I just plain don't have time. So there is winter, spring, summer, and fall, autumn. Um, um, do we... Do we offer them first as a group? Somebody wanted to do the series, and then if not, we break no, them down? separately. They want the group. They can put them in all. Okay. We're all in. I mean. Okay. All right. So it'll be an ABCD, winter, spring, summer, autumn. The same order that they come in the yeah. year. Winter, spring, summer, autumn, ABCD, and. Oh, let me take the hashtag off. Hold on. Oh. <laughs> Winter has the snow. Oh, the bunny, that's cute. Yes, mm -hmm. he is. I'm like, Winter has the snow. Look at flakes. Snow flakes they're carrying in their buckets. They are. They're just super cute. These are big, thick. These are nice, thick covers. That's why I got them, because you don't have to do anything to these. They are thick, ready to go. Just how much? really how much? Never said how much. Eight bucks a piece. Eight. That's exactly what I paid for them. That's in, ladies. And somebody needs to make journals and show me. So, so in my mind, they actually did go for what I thought I was getting them for. Oh, they could be made into ephemera holders. Yeah, that's what I was. I was making one like that, and I, I quit halfway. I didn't like yeah. it. Uh, Carrie, yeah. Carrie Waters will take the A. All righty. Thank you, Carrie. Hi, Toby. What happened to my sticky notes? Don't have them. I'll just have to write it down. And honest, here's my thought. If somebody want, I would, if you wanted to do them separate, $8 a piece, that's what I paid for them. But if somebody wants all four, and at this point, Carrie's the only one that gets that option because she already claimed A. But if you want all four, Carrie, 25 for all four. Which is actually $7 off. That's almost buy three, get one free. A. Going once. Going twice. <laughs> yeah. Carrie, that offers out to you and only you. Um, all th all four of them for $25. Carrie W. Hi, Toby. It is. I just want to see somebody do a whole series of them because I think it would be, it'd be cute. It's okay if no one else wants any. Yep. Oops, she's going to take all four. Nobody else wants any. She gets the deal. Awesome. Very cool. 25. For 25. Yep, she can have all four for 25. I really hate to separate them. Oh, it says they have 10 magnetic pages. Okay, she's going to take all but four. I don't know. I don't see that. I didn't see 10 in there. Okay, 25 for Carrie. It's all of them. Okay, and then the other thing is the Dragonology Handbook. This is a smaller version than the one you have. 
This is, um, it's kind of like Flower Fairies, but Dragonology. And it's a practical course in dragons. And again, it's an interactive book. Has ephemera and stuff throughout it. Love the marbled pages there. I'll just whip through it quickly. Um, practical course in dragonology. There's stuff in every pocket. The Oath of a Dragonologist. Lots of good dragon pictures. There's lots of good dragon pictures in there throughout here. How much for this one? Um, I don't know. I didn't look up how much I paid for it. U.S. is twelve ninety nine, so I probably paid ten bucks. So ten bucks. I'm I'm happy with ten bucks. That's the bag. Oh, look at all the stickers. This one is new, so all the stickers are there unused. Elementary dragonology. Okay, ladies, I'm putting it in. Dragons. It's in. Dragons. I do like the way they're sewn together. It's between me and Glennis. And uh oh. <laughs> and Margie? <laughs> Dr. Drake needs you. Got it. She coming first. Who got it? Glennis. Ah, Glennis gets it. I should have said $20, huh? <laughs> No, this is very cool. Egyptian alphabet, Lambert script, and whatever you want to call that one. All right, Glennis gets that one. Thank you, Glennis. Dragonology. Yeah, that's it's a fun one. I've been hanging on to that one. Um, so I, I should have put this in silently and then put the me in. And then, put, and then put me in before. Exactly. No, I don't want the cover, Glennis. Dragonology. You don't want the cover? Is Glenda's going to ask me to tear it apart? I'll bring it to retreat. You can tear it apart however you want. I'm not tearing it apart. It's cool. Yeah, I don't want to tear that apart. Okay. Nope. <laughs> nope. I'll bring it to retreat. You can do what you want with it. <laughs> okay. So keep working on this one. Keep um, doodling and just create a whole background of art. Put in the group. Show us what you did. Um, show us what you did on the others with your the backgrounds that you did. Glennis, Toby will take the cover. Is that what you're saying, Toby? Uh, she might make a she might make a journal out of the cover at retreat. Put it into the fundraiser. Yeah, we might have a lot of stuff there that she could use. Yeah, it is a cool dragon book. So please put pictures of the things that you did in the group so that we can see everybody's. Everybody's is going to be different. But whatever you did, whether you did the basic background, whether you added some border, whether you added some other stencils on it, there's this one that we did the basic background and we didn't get to, we didn't get to putting anything on it. It needed to dry. So that's the cool one. That's the only cool one I did today. Cool colors. But I do really like, I think it went this way. I do really like those colors. And that lavender one really has a shimmer. That's one of those Prima that's one of those Prima ones. Um, I have two of these. I will look up the price. I can put them in the group if you're interested in the um, Bloom. Bloom, what are they called? Something Bloom. One color spline. These are all the colors, the only colors that I have. And so there's two of each one. Uh, but there's a couple of different purples, a couple of different greens, a couple of different yellows and oranges. Actually, four of those. And uh, Precious Stone. I got to try that one. Let's see what that looks like. But yeah, so I can put those in the group if you while we're talking about sprays. If you're interested in those and you want um, any of those stuck in your box for this week since we're just working on, we're working on invoices today. Um, Candy's yeah. got her internet back, so we're working on invoices today. So be oh patient God, with us. I was working on done. <laughs> <laughs> this was a lot of fun, though. I really like Hopefully, if you have been hesitant on an art journal, just write down the formula. Once you do it a few times, you can start altering and changing and doing some other things, and you'll find out what you like to do and you know formula that works that works for you. And um, just play with it. Lots of fun. Try different colors every time. What I did, and try some colors that are outside of your comfort zone and that you wouldn't normally pick up. It's just your art journal. Nobody has to see it. And if they're all in the warm or if they're all in the cool, they're going to go together anyway. So thanks for hanging out with us today, guys. It was lots of fun. Thank you, Candy, for helping me out. You're welcome. Appreciate it.
this ain't dry, honestly. Just, just paint. <laughs> you want to stay here so you don't have to go back and uh, deal with Charlie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's going to be so pretty when you do the negative space in white. Yeah. It's a pink. I'm using that bashful pink. Oh, I guess it's dry. No, it's not that, dry. Um, it's not hang on. Is that, is that, um, playful pink? Playful yeah. pink. Yeah, it's yeah. not going to cover it. It's not going to, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, no, you want a straight white. Um, <sighs> ask me how I know, but <laughs> I, will say, I will save you the hassle of, um, going through the whole thing and then realizing you got to go back over it. It's very sheer and all you'll get is a shimmery sheer coat. And, and kind of pretty. Yeah. It's kind of pretty. It is, it is very pretty. Um, actually put that over the white. Yeah. It'd be pretty over the white. This um, there's KK. This stuff right here. Uh -huh. That little shimmer that you get at certain angles. Yeah. That's, that's that playful pink. Oh, uh, okay. So it's not going to cover anything, but it's going to give you that little iridescent shimmer. And in order to be able to see your artwork, you're going to want white to, yeah, white it out. So every, that, yeah, it's very pretty. That's going to be gorgeous when she gets that one done. Everyone have a wonderful day. What? Wait, what's uh Thank you, Marianne and Candy. Thanks all you lovely ladies. Both of you, not us. <laughs> what? <laughs> Haggard. Haggard ladies? <laughs> Did she okay. just call us haggard ladies? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Angela. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Feel pretty haggard. <laughs> oh, have the rest of a great week. Um, not that we're not going to see you around this week, because we are, but we're going to work on those invoices and get those out right away so we can get some packages out to you. And then we'll um, look at uh, a sale for some other. Nobody things. offered to pay me extra to get them done. So I'm thinking, I don't know. Hey, either. yeah. Well, maybe they don't want their stuff. I don't know. <laughs> Somebody want to bribe candy to get those invoices done? <laughs> Um, oh, I see. H A G D. Have a great day. <laughs> Thanks, Angela. <laughs> oh, the acronym. No, Angela, I'm just messing with you. That's because <laughs> you know all us haggard old ladies. <laughs> oh, I'm it's good to see you. I'm the world. <laughs> um. Oh, you did not misspeak, Angela. Don't you worry about it at all. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> just have a great day. Thanks, Tara. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Angela. All right, guys. We'll uh, watch out for your invoices. Um, hopefully, um, uh, possibly, probably, maybe tonight. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll get them to you. Hopefully, well, when Charlie leaves, I'll finish. I'll get them. I'll start working on them. Okay. Me. He leaves tonight. Yeah. Supposed to okay. pick up at dinner time, so okay. So you may get them tonight. If you don't get it tonight, oh, it's gonna be you tomorrow. might get them tonight. I don't it'll probably be late tonight. Okay, then um don't count on your invoices until tomorrow night. Yeah, get you them to, to me to tonight. Sure. I won't be able to get them to you until tomorrow night. So yeah, expect Sorry, your lady. invoices it's, tomorrow night. I, was not okay. I could not <laughs> <laughs> I gotta couldn't. take care of the upset grandchild first. Because not from not sleeping. Yeah, project done that. <laughs> oh, Angela says, well, I can pay my invoice if that helps. <laughs> if you pay my too, then I'll get it for you. You guys pull together and pay Candy's invoice, and then she'll be no, more kidding. motivated to get them out. <laughs> I still would be motivated. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's honesty. I do like the flowers. Those are really pretty. Oh, it's just really a pretty. bad week. Just a bad week, ladies. It's been, it's been a, it's been a week. It's been a week all the way around. Yeah. Um, yeah. I won't be around tomorrow at all. Um, got a funeral. <laughs> so that's why you won't get invoices till tomorrow night. But get invoices out tomorrow night. We'll get things packed. And for her, so. Mm -hmm. And I was working on a project for you, and it took precedence. She was. She was working on a project for me for the funeral, and I appreciate it. And that took her like two days, and it was awesome. Yeah, it's it's been a heck of a week. So I felt bad Sylvia had to leave. She had a death in the family, but yeah, don't. 
another one. But it's what happens when all the, the greats get, get older and older. But mine wasn't a great that got older and older. Mine was a young man, my nephew. He was killed tragically I mean, in a very tragic accident. He was 28. So <coughs> my throat is so dry. So it's been a rough week. But um, we've made it through. And I really do appreciate you helping me. Or, uh, helping me. You working on that and doing that for me, Candy. I'm glad you liked it. <clears throat> yeah, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be awesome. I know his wife's gonna love it. I hope so. <clears throat> so, I'm gonna get it framed and ready to go. I will be out tomorrow, but I'll be back tomorrow night and um, get those invoices out, and we'll be in the group. Thank you, Carrie. It is. It's always the nicest kids, you know, the night the the nicest ones. Uh, he was a good guy. He was a really really good guy. So. Got to go spend the day with the family tomorrow and get through the funeral and, you know, all of this stuff. But um, but we will get through it. We will survive. And uh, life goes on, right? Um, we just need to take care of his care, take care of his little wife now. They have a two-year-old. They've only been married three years, and they have a two-year-old baby. Just turned two. Just barely. So cute little guy. He reminds me a lot of Charlie, actually. Little round face and his hair. When I was doing the thing. <laughs> Like, yeah, didn't you think so? Yeah. yeah. You were like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, he does look a lot like Charlie. Uh, he's just cute. He's just a cute little guy. Always this big smile on his face. And, yep. You know, yep. Well, so. Charlie doesn't always have a smile on his face. Anyway. <laughs> I'm sure Gunner has his moments too, but, but you know. Oh, I, just, like, I like that name, Gunner. Yeah. Gunner. Gunner. Trevor and Gunner. Yeah. So gonna go uh, gonna go spend some time with the family tomorrow. Oh, I can't wait to see that candy. That is gonna be so pretty. Now I want to do a cool color one because I love that. I might even do that over the top of this one and have that texture to be in my designs. I like that. Hmm. See, once you figure out how to get those backgrounds down, you can do all kinds of stuff with them. So. All right, guys, thank you so much for being here. And um, it was a lot of fun. And oops, flipping that white paint around. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> You're as bad as me. <laughs> I, I chipped the Posca pen. It was, it was drying up. And I was like, oh, I didn't have oh. a <laughs> I was like, oh. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll be in the group. Let's post some of these things that we did today, the ones we like, the ones we don't like so much. Uh, it's funny how somebody else will like the one that you don't like so much. Yeah, I'll turn up the crooked. I'll turn up the crooked borders. <laughs> <laughs> eh, don't care about the borders. Don't care about crooked borders. Oh, it's Maybe. like way crooked. It's way crooked. Oh, <laughs> like, like off, off. I'll bet not. I'll bet if you show me, it's not as bad as uh, you I'll think. You're wrong. <laughs> Let's see where to go. <laughs> but you're see. wrong. It's way off. Uh, it's okay, but is if it's that far in all the way around, then it's meant to be. <laughs> the one side was fine, but the other side, no, not so much. So far, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll bet you lined it up with the the edge of the border from the last one and forgot to line it up with the edge of the paper instead, right? Yeah, yeah, yep. probably. Yeah. Well, yeah. and I didn't get that straight. <laughs> Crooked is my middle name, not straight. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Ski wampus. Ski wampus. <laughs> ski -wampus. <laughs> See, if they're all ski wampus, then you, then you could go. You could go ski wampus here. Take the next one, ski wampus, the same direction, yeah. and so they're all they're all going the same ski wampus. Right. But no, you had to make one of them right. Yeah, one of them that's right. Accident, Candy. That's what Carrie says. <laughs> Julie says make it a feature. Yeah. And Carrie says, happy accidents, Candy. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, I need to go clean up a bit. Well, since I don't have invoices to get out today, that means that I need to go back to work on retreat. Oh, I've got more stuff in the house right now for retreat <laughs> than I have for uh, orders. It's crazy. How does that happen? Yeah, lots of stuff. 
retreat is going to be so fun. We have one spot available if anybody last minute can make it to retreat or wants to. In April, you still got a month. It's in April. Who filled up? I didn't know. <clears throat> Who's all going now? Um, oh, I got to pull the list. I'll give it to you later. Okay. Um, but yeah, so if anybody last minute wants to jump into retreat, Angela, we could squeeze in second because Angela's daughter would come with her, who's also a crafty girl. Oh, yeah, Ooh. we need to meet Miss Caitlin. Get some, get some, uh, little craftiness there. So, yeah, Angela, little twisting of the arm there. <laughs> yeah, she's good at that, ladies. Yeah, I really wish you could too, Carrie. Really wish you could. Maybe look ahead to September. Um, Okay, those of you who are here, I'll give you a little heads up. I have a list of about 20 people who have said that they want to go for September. Now, I know not everybody's going to be able to. Some of those will fall out and nothing's committed yet. But the, the registration link is going to go live during April retreat. Because once April is complete, then the September one can open up. So if you're thinking September... Just keep that in mind. Those of you who are here, the others won't know about it because they weren't here. But that link is going to go live during retreat. We're going to do at least three lives from retreat, and they are fun. They are fun. So don't miss the lives during retreat week for sure. Uh, Angela's mom shocked her and said she wished she could go. See, Angela, I'm telling you. Angela, will you please call me when we're done with this? Just please call me, okay? <laughs> Just please call me. September, yeah, if you can't make it in April. Um, but we've got a spot for Angela and, and uh, Angela and plus one in, in April. But September, yeah, that will come open during the live in April. So we'll keep you posted on that. Anyway, I'm looking forward to it. But I've got to go finish my part of what I'm bringing to retreat that we're all participating in. So not quite done. It's been taking a little extra long to dry. So I couldn't do the next steps. All right, Kathy, Candy, that is so pretty. That is really pretty, Candy. I'm making you full screen. I like that. See, I told you it looked great with the white. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll go back over with pink with a different brush. With, with that little, that, that, um, whatever, that par party pier, barely, barely pink, whatever it is, yeah. playful pink, because that will just add that little iridescent shimmer on the white. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be super pretty. I like that a lot. That's going to be, oh, wow. That is really pretty. All right, we're going to go. We're going to go so I can get working on that, get stuff ready for um, retreat. And Angela, I'm sitting at my desk. I'm not leaving my desk till you call, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Don't leave me sitting here for three days. <laughs> Love you guys. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye-bye.